Welcome to Mr Chalk's Revision Tips. In this video, we will look at Disease Reservoirs, Disease Transmission, Indirect Transmission, Vectors and Transmission Factors. Pathogen Transmission is to consider what are called Disease Reservoirs. Right, a Disease Reservoir is a reservoir of infectious agent which is in the habitat which the agent normally lives, grows and multiplies. Reservoirs can include human reservoirs, animal reservoirs and non-living reservoirs. Human reservoirs, so many common infectious disease have human reservoirs. Diseases that are transmitted from person to person without intermediates such as sexually transmitted diseases, measles, mumps, streptococcal infections and many other pathogens pass between human to human. Some of the more notable human reservoirs in terms of the diseases would be something like smallpox. It's worth noting that smallpox, because it only had a human reservoir, was able to be eradicated through a long process of vaccination. So, humans are also susceptible from diseases that have animal reservoirs. So, many of these diseases are transmitted from animal to animal, and then from animal to humans, which are called incidental hosts, because we are not the preferred host for that particular disease. Environmental reservoirs, such as plants, soil, and water in the environment, can also harbor infectious agents. Many fungal agents, such as those cause various histological and breathing problems and such forth, but more importantly, have a wide range of effects on plants. So, in terms of disease transmission, the first batch of types of transmission that we want to look at are methods of direct transmission. So direct contact with infectious spread is when organisms pass from an infected person to a healthy person by direct physical contact, either with the bod, body, blood or by fluids. So have a look at the diagram above and have a think about how we could possibly limit each of those methods or each of those routes of transmission. So one method of direct transmission is by droplet spread. This refers to the spread of relatively large short range aerosols produced by sneezing, coughing, or even talking. Droplet spread is classified as a direct method because transmission is by direct spray over a few feet before the droplets fall to the ground. The host can then go and get the droplets onto the hands and quite often they will go and touch, for instance, place on the face, which will enable the pathogen to enter the body. Skin skin contact. So some infections are spread directly when skin or mucous membrane, right, so that is the thin moist layer of many parts of the body, such as the nose, mouth, throat or genitals, come into contact with the skin or mucous membrane of another person. Infections are spread indirectly when the skin or mucous membrane come into contaminated objects. 
inoculation so some inspections are spread when blood or other bodily fluids such as urine saliva breast milk seminal fluid from an infected person comes into contact with the mucous membrane of somebody who does not have the disease so this this type of uh, infection is quite often linked to sexually transmitted diseases or diseases that are spread by people who are taking drugs and are sharing needles with each other indirect transmission refers to the transfer of the infectious agent from the reservoir to a host by suspended air particles inanimate objects or animal intermediates have a look at the uh, diagram above and just consider just for a minute how we could go and limit each of these transmission routes So pathogenic agents contaminate, contained in aerosol droplets can be passed from one person to another. Oral, so consumed or consumption of pathogenic agents in contaminated feed, water, licking, chewing on contaminated environmental objects can go and pass the pathogens. Feed and water contaminated with feces or urine are frequently the cause of oral transmission of disease agents. Contaminated environmental objects include equipment, feed bunks where farm animals eat, water troughs, fencing, salt and mineral blocks and other items that animals may lick or chew on. So a contaminated inanimate object that transmits a disease agent from one susceptible animal to another is referred to as a formite. It involves a secondary route of transmission for the pathogen to enter the host. Examples include contaminated shovels, clothing, bowls, buckets, brushes, clippers, all manner of things. Vector-borne methods of transmission. So this is where an insect acquires a pathogen from one animal and transmits it to another, either mechanically or biologically. Mechanical transmission is where the disease agent does not replicate or develop in the vector. It is simply transported by the vector from one animal to another. Biological transmission involves the vector taking up the agent usually through a blood meal from an infected animal and the pathogen replicates or develops inside of the vector before it is passed on the most common example of that would be malaria in carried by mosquitoes so the four main types of vectors that we need to consider are human vectors, wind vectors, water vectors, and animal vectors. So a deadly virus can be carried great distances on the wind. Large amounts of virus are excreted by infected animals before signs of the disease are evident, and the winds can spread this over a long distance water so spores of bacteria or fungus or any sort of pathogen can go and collect on the surface film of the water that can therefore be passed from organism to organism either when an organism drinks the water or if that contaminated water is splashed onto it We have living vectors, so things like mosquitoes, fleas, ticks and lice. 
and finally pathogens can be uh, passed by humans either on hands clothing by transporting crops or by various farming practices there are six main factors that will infect or affect the transmission of diseases or the roots of transmission right some of the main ones involve having high populations so in a high population there's overcrowding there's often poor sanitation uh, poor nutrients or poor nutrition can be an effect because people who have poor nutrition often will have a lower immune system people with compromised immunity already if a person already has compromised immunity they will be less able to go and fight off the disease and uh, climate change climate change refers to where the climate is changed sufficiently in an area that a new vector can enter and survive in it so first question that i would like you to think about is this one about the work of Semmelweis so in the 19th century Dr Semmelweis investigated infection in hospital but he compared two wards together the infection rate on those two wards are demonstrated in the graph in one ward the midwives did not wash their hands in the other ward they did what I would like you to do is just go and compare and explain those results. Pause the video and have a go. Second question that I would like you to think about is the, the table to the side shows infection rates of gonorrhea over the years i want you to go and describe the patterns in the number of males and females with gonorrhea from 2005 to 2013. pause the video and have a go here are a few things that you might want to think about So, some of your answers might talk about the fact that the level is steady up to 2009. It begins rising after 2009. Males are higher than females, and males are rising faster than females. Next question is that salmonella is a genus of bacteria which causes food poisoning give ways with a mild infection of salmonella can prevent the spread of the bacteria from person to person so things for you to think about is what is salmonella what does salmonella cause and how can salmonella be spread pause the video then check the answer So, some of your answers might include washing hands after using the toilet or being sick, washing hands before preparing or handling food. If you are infected, don't prepare food yourself. If you are infected, isolate yourself, disinfect clothes and surfaces, and do not share utensils, cookery, or towels with a person who is infected with this. next question is talking about pathogen transmission in plants so the diagram shows a plant of a rose garden plant a has the fungus or the fungal disease black rose spot disease which is the which plant is the most likely to be infected with the disease and why 
So things for you to think about is how the fungus is being spread, the direction of the wind, and why wouldn't E be affected first? Pause the video, have a go at answering it, and then check out the answer. So the answer would be C, because the fungi or spores are blown in that direction by the wind. Thanks for watching. 